Welcome to the HR Chat Podcast, bringing the best of the HR and talent communities to you. Welcome to the HR Chat Podcast. I'm your host today, Bill Bannum. And in this episode, we're going to discuss employee-centric tech and tracking employees' need through the current crisis. My guest this time is Joël Gagor, pre-sales project manager at CIGIT. Joelle began her career in project management and business development nearly 10 years ago. Her university studies in management and accounting at the John Molson Concordia School of Business naturally led her to several business projects. Passionate about discovering a variety of fields, she works on multiple projects in different industries, creative and technological. Her diverse background has allowed her to develop field experience, focusing on the need to diversify different types of employees. With a tendency to question the status quo, she brings new business opportunities to businesses. Specialized in the implementation of tech solutions and the integration of the CGID HR solution, she brings her expertise of HR needs while guiding an intelligent employee-centric process for the younger generations. CGID Talent allows users to manage candidates, recruiting, training, performance, compensation, career development, and succession. Its business intelligence tools help identify organizational potential in order to clearly drive HR strategies. Joel, I'm delighted to welcome you to the HR Chat Show today. Bill, this was such a great introduction. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast. I'm uh, very excited to have this conversation with you. Me too. I did create quite a long introduction this time, listeners. I, I, I feel like I know Joelle to, to a certain extent already, but um, you've, got, you've got some pretty interesting things on your LinkedIn profile that we haven't spoken about yet. So, for example, you describe yourself as, uh, as a project ninja. Give me an overview of the CG Talent Management Suite and your role as a project ninja over there. Right, right. I I can say that I have um, an atypical type of profile and uh, I can gladly say I do. Um, And so I think that product uh, ninja is today, I think it's a thing, um, if that makes sense. Uh, And essentially, I'll I'll explain why I like to use this term. But uh, currently, um, as you just mentioned, I do work for CG Talent, which is a native uh, built-in in-house uh, uh, solution software for uh, for HR um, and that solution has evolved over um, over 20 years uh, through meeting different client needs uh, worldwide as well specifically in Europe and North America and it supports the complete talent management uh, functionalities and needs uh, and that service uh, large organizations to mid-size organization and hence it created this uh, diversity of processes that we need to handle within our solution. And as you just mentioned, it goes through recruitment, job, uh, job multi-posting, onboarding, performance, learning management, career and succession planning. And so it has a large uh, configuration uh, ability. And because it is so highly configurable, um, this is when I have to put my ninja hat, <laughs> as I, I like to say, um, in order to understand and and really discuss and analyze the needs of uh, our different clients, uh, since they are in the different industries as well, and really find a solution um, to with the configuration center to uh, to propose to our clients and uh, and then roll out the projects. And then rolled out the project. She makes it sound so easy, listeners. <laughs> okay, so so your talent management software has the capabilities, I understand, of analyzing and managing employee data. Um, wh- why does your team promote the idea that your tools, and, and this is a quote from you guys, sh- should be used not only to focus on results, but on mindsets? Right, so first of all, the tool is as good as the user. Um, and essentially, of course, as I was explaining, I go through the configuration center in order to support processes. But I think it's important to go uh, a little bit higher in terms of, of analyzing what we're trying to do with the tool. 
And what I'm trying to express here by focusing on mindset versus result for HR is to focus on mindset first to then achieve the expected results uh, from the employees when they're having the conversation between managers and employees. So, um, and, and what we're proposing is simply a shift of perspective. Um, but there, the question is, is how do you as an enterprise influence your employees' mindset since the idea of mindset can seem a little bit more conceptual? Um, and so what we're proposing here is to allow employees to take ownership of their skill sets, their strength, uh, their career evolution. And technology such as CJ Talent Management or other HR tech uh, for talent management can help achieve these types of healthy culture. Uh, so for example, um, uh, our solution can offer a, a variety and, and of, of uh, configuration and flexibility to allow employee to to, to mark and note and define uh, their own career aspiration, define their own goals, request skills development, um, speak about skills that might not necessarily be uh, typical skills uh, to address. And essentially we're allowing them to set the table for the discussion with their managers. On the other side, for the manager, for, for, from a manager's perspective and HR as well, we're providing the tool uh, to help manager make immediate decisions and, and put plan in place following those conversations that they had with their employees. They can put steps in, uh, learning activities, uh, define what skills to develop, uh, assign employees to mentorship program, for example, uh, in order to help and lead their employees towards their objectives. And these scenarios can also be followed up by uh, the HR department in order to maintain and, and verify that the, the culture is being respected. And so by allowing this type of flexibility and conversation and actions, employees will feel listened to, valued. Um, and this is when self-motivation will, will take place. Um, and all these aspects uh, encompass mindset and eventually that will lead to better results for the company um, and you know I, I, I kind of like to to use that that example uh, it's one of you know a Joel example like that I like to call uh, so you know let's say uh, you are an employee right now in a current position uh, and you have you only apply to the job because you had to find a job so how how many of us have found ourselves in those situations in those situations, but you do see the potential within the company. Uh, and so by being currently in position A and you're trying to move to position B, then the task that you found that you find mundane or that you dislike to do, well, by having the bigger picture, you will take ownership of what you have to accomplish and achieve, and you will doing a lot better uh, and perform, overperform on something that you probably didn't even like in order to get to the next step. So that's all part of the mindset and uh, technology can help enterprises achieve uh, this. Okay, thank you very much. And one of the, one of the other areas that you service um, is in terms of the provision of training, e-learning and development planning. Can can you share any trends around how employees are consuming content and courses since COVID hit? I mean, obviously everybody's at home at the moment. Uh, we, we we can't learn in the same experiential ways as we could before. But uh, you know, there are a lot of options out there to continue to continue learning online. But what's the impact? You know, what what are those trends? Is it is it as engaging? What what are the what are the challenges? Right. So I do have to admit that since 2020, uh, obviously with COVID, as of March <laughs> specifically, uh, we've seen a tremendous increase in the demand uh, of learning tools. Uh, so uh, 2019, I would say that recruitment and ATS, talent acquisition systems, was all we were talking about. And today, uh, learning has seriously become uh, a topic. And... Uh, uh, especially with COVID, uh, a lot of enterprises found, themse found themselves needing to maintain, first of all, uh, from a professional aspect, uh, certain certification. So maintain 
uh, learning certification courses, etc. Uh, but also uh, for uh, employee development, continuous development, uh, keeping the employees engaged within uh, their current role. Uh, of course, they tried uh, uh, maintaining the classes uh, by minimizing disruption from moving to from on-site classes to online classes. So, of course, the content, the way it has been consumed is now all digital. So we're seeing virtual classes a lot more. Uh, you can see that Zoom and Team has, exp uh, has exploded. It used to be WebEx, for example. Um, online training. Uh, E-learning e content is becoming more and more used by enterprises. I've even seen, uh, I wouldn't say it's a trend, uh, but I did see the request of supporting augmented reality within the content um, in order to create simulations uh, and, and create uh, engagement between, uh, well, the learner and, and the content. And of course, the way they consume uh, is today is from anywhere at any time, from my uh, mobile phone, uh, tablet. Uh, I could be in Costa Rica learning <laughs> at this point. Uh, so of course, everything has turned into, into uh, to digital. Uh, another request that we've been seeing with uh, with clients and that could fall under more of a trend is to continue in, in terms of continuing learning path. Um, actually, we were working on this way before uh, COVID, so pre-COVID, but it has become a little bit more used and, and, and uh, valued for is uh, what we call the flexible path where um, employees have to take a, a, a set of courses in order to continue the evolution within their career or, or their knowledge. Um, and the, the HR team will select uh, a few courses that are, that are mandatory, but allow for employees to select three or four other courses that they wish to learn themselves and add it to the path in order to get the certification. So it's kind of a blending uh, learning path and it allows for managers to define what topic are necessary for a position or for, for you know, uh, career evolution, yet allow um, uh, employees to select other interests and mix it within that path in order to move forward. And so we're seeing this type of flexibility as well within uh, learning in general. So all these components uh, are obviously coming into play. That's a lot of components, listeners. Yes. I, I tried to follow as many as I could. I was trying to write them down. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so what about an attraction and on boarding talent joelle uh, so listeners actually we, joelle and i were talking about this before we hit record today and i know that she's got some pretty awesome ideas um but i'm going to really put her to the test now because i'm going to say in two minutes or less what are the big strategic and tech challenges happening at the moment in two minutes or less that's a challenge but challenge accepted <laughs> so essentially um well, first of all, the, the recruitment market has been disrupted either by furloughs or, or co corporate restructuring. And as I mentioned, uh, new uh, industries emerging uh, because leaded, lead by uh, consumer behavior, right? And so the recruitment process have changed uh, and the market itself is segmented really by, by industry. So uh, there's a few ways that, that we could tackle uh, those challenges and those attractions. So first of all, uh, I think that being uh, open-minded from a recruitment perspective is becoming uh, more crucial because uh, in order for companies to adapt, uh, they need uh, human capital that is even that is agile. And so atypical profiles are becoming more and more uh, uh, sought for. Um, and in order to find those atypical profiles, uh, of course, you can use, for example, questionnaires and, and criteria and types of questions, but you really need to be thinking outside the box in order to capture those information. And then use search tools uh, that will allow finding you skills and interests that are not necessarily fitting the mold, um, but could be interesting to uh, tackle and of course, uh, eventually move th throughout the selection process. Uh, 
Um, and so really it's about being open-minded and using the same tools, but it's how you use it. Um, another way that, that uh, we could suggest is that uh, we do have some analytic tools that allows you to verify all your current, uh, the cur current jobs that you have within a, an organization. And you can find uh, jobs that are a little bit less, con that are considered less critical to fill. However, the person um, that we call the chair, that is the, the person sitting in the chair uh, could be uh, a lot more valuable within a different position. And so we propose to them, so we propose to HR to search within the current database of, uh, well, the current employee database on different skills uh, and propose to those people different position and then fill positions that are a little bit easier to, 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 well, to fill for. Um, essentially, these are two, two ways to uh, look at attraction. Uh, and of course, onboarding. Onboarding is all about the experience of those new employees and retaining <laughs> the employees is a whole other uh, conversation. Okay, so in general terms, can you can you share some of the conversations that you've had with clients and partners focused on creating safe spaces for employee expression? Right. So uh, we do we do have some fun stories, and um, they're kind of similar between a few clients that we we cater to uh, in the food industry, banking, and and even retail. And it's essentially they were using our performance module to, to, to have assessments. Um, and um, in one of the forms, because you can create all kinds of questions that you want, uh, they were asking for passion and interest. So, so really going outside the box of the typical skills uh, and performance and, uh, and objectives that one has to, 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 to talk about, but really going into uh, outside uh, professional curriculum. Um, so, for example, uh, their employees started putting photography, uh, I don't know, Photoshop. So different, uh, an interest, somebody was saying that they were organizing camps for, uh, for the youth. Um, and so if in one of those companies, um, they were creating internally a new program to launch within the, the organization and using uh, the, that database, that, that uh, employee database that I was referring to, uh, they were capable of searching via skills and, and extra activities and passions. Um, and they were able to create a portfolio of current employees that would suit that new project idea. And so they propose uh, the, the job roles to, to that portfolio of employee. And they were able to uh, roll over the, the program. And so uh, when, when we learned that, we thought it was, uh, first of all, uh, I, I personally applaud them because now you're going into finding people's uh, passion, interest, even though it's not something that they necessar necessarily studied for or have uh, the curriculum for professionally. Uh, these are people that are passionate about a topic and again, we're going back to mindset. We're going back to engaging within the enterprise. And then you become part of a mission. And of course, I'm sure you've been hearing this, Bill, but everybody's talking about uh, finding your purpose, finding your purpose within an enterprise. What is the mission? What is the goal? How do I belong? And so these types of programs that are you know, still uh, revenue oriented, are capitalizing on on what people love essentially um and so that was i thought a, a very great success story i love that uh we are already coming towards the end of this interview i can't believe it uh, but we are so a couple but it's amazing it goes fast you know? it does go fast right we're going to, have to get fun. you on again i think, I think yeah right. that's true yeah do it again um okay two more questions for you before we do finish and um, the last question is just going to be to, to uh, help our listeners learn more about you. So this next question, perhaps you could answer it in a way that maybe brings in some of the elements that you've spoken about up to this point as well as kind of a bit of a wrap up. Um, and I'd like to talk to you a bit about employee centric tech and the importance of tracking employee needs in that context. Joelle, how should managers use talent management tools to create a healthy employee-centric culture? 
Right. So I think that the idea of employee centric is very much similar to customer centric. So we've been hearing organization approaching uh, this new uh, we're all customer centric. Uh, we we uh, included design thinking within our processes. We listen to our clients. Well, it's the same idea within the enterprise. So it's one thing to offer it to your your clients, of course, but within the enterprise, having that same uh, mentality and methodology uh, via uh, set meetings and and performance interviews. Um, however, instead of having the an- the good old annual performance uh, review that you know I think is is getting outdated, um, you know we're we're looking now for more upbeat, uh, constant meetings between managers and employees, uh, and essentially the idea is to have more um, you know regular meetings either they're biweekly or even monthly, uh, and having those same conversations that you would be having during the performance review but uh, uh, more uh, more oriented towards the current situation, uh, tackling current issues, uh, looking at, you know, fo- doing some goals follow-up, uh, looking what's, what's not working, uh, finding new plans, uh, addressing the situation right away, and continuously having those conversations between the employee and uh, the manager. And with tools, uh, the tool only... Uh, captures that information so of course uh, employee engagement is not about the tool it's about the manager and and their employee and the conversation and and uh, being able to have to 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 listen uh, and act fast Uh, but the tool will track these conversations uh, and that by tracking this conversation and those percentages and and those and in the evolution, um, management and HR can then analyze because they'll collect essentially they're collecting data and they're collecting active data in order to address fast uh, you know, in a fast pace, the situations. And so to, to, to us, this is what employee centricity is about. And of course, it's not putting a, a, a massive process in place because at the end of the day, every employee will have different uh, struggle, issues, uh, evolution, wishes, uh, how to address situation. Um And we're simply capturing that information and allowing uh, managers to make decisions based on the data that we capture. All right. And final question for today. It's a toughie. How can we learn more? How can our listeners connect with you? And how can they learn more about all the awesome things happening over CGED? Of course, what a tough question. So the tough answer is website and social media. essentially we're going back to digital of course no but um uh so clients or or or, uh, people that are interested of course even in just having conversation with us and understanding a little bit more of our culture and 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 uh, what we represent and our solutions can find out on cjid.com um and then they can also follow us of course on linkedin uh where they can look you can search for cjid canada because CJIT is worldwide, but the team in North America is CJIT Canada. Um, and of course, you can search our name, so my name, Joël Gargour, on LinkedIn and reach out to have a conversation and even just to exchange on, on uh, data, on thoughts, uh, on perspective. Uh, maybe uh, you agree or do not agree with what we just said, and we always love a great conversation. Wonderful. Well, that just leaves me to say for today, Joël, Thank you, merci, for being a guest on this episode of the HR Chat Show. Merci beaucoup, Bill. C'était un grand plaisir de participer à votre podcast. Until next time, happy working. And as always, please do continue to stay safe. Thank you for listening to the HR Chat Podcast, brought to you by the HR Gazette.